Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about um, actually how I use my looper. You've probably heard me talk uh, in many videos, uh, if I'm showing a soloing concept or a rhythm concept, I tend to say, hey, you know, let me, let me play a blues into my looper really quick. And well, that's great and all, but it would be good for you to know how to do that. <laughs> so I always think of grooves that I can play into my looper and I kind of think about it as if I'm a drummer. So if you don't know anything about playing drums, that's okay. The basic gist of it is kick drum on beats one and three, snare drum on beats two and four. So here's how I look at that. Let's say, um, let's do key of G, right? So I've got a G7 is my one chord, right? C7, could use that, could use that, could use C9, it doesn't matter. It's, it's totally not important. So I've got C7, D7 is my five chord. The way I kind of approach this is that the low end, the low string, or maybe the low couple of strings, in fact, let me turn the, get the overdrive turned off. Um, that's what's gonna give me sort of my kick, and then the higher end is gonna be my snare. Okay, so it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm using a little bit of palm mute down here on the low end. So if I don't, it's kind of it kind of rumbles. I don't really want it to all mix together that way. So even when I hit the higher end of the strings, I then place my palm again against those strings. So basically all the time, <laughs> my palm is on the guitar. But down here, you have to be careful because depending on where it sits in relation to the bridge is gonna make a big difference. If I'm too far back by the bridge, if the palm of my hand is, is on the bridge, it's not doing anything, or at least not very much. If it's too much on the strings, I'm not gonna hear anything at all. There is a sweet spot that for me is sort of, I just start to feel the bridge under the, the heel of my hand. And right there, I can get a nice, comfortable sound. Again, I don't want it non-existent, and I don't want it boomy. I want it just comfortable. Okay, so there's a little bit of control over it. It's going to, the sound is going to come out, but then it's going to be, gonna, it's gonna go away quickly. It's gonna decay very quickly because I've got my, the heel of my right hand on those strings lightly. Now, I don't really do that for the top side of the chord, but I then stop them right away. So one, two, three, four. A little bit of mute, no mute, but then stop. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the basic technique. If I was doing it on, say, a C7 chord, it's the same thing. The only difference is that my lower string is the fifth string. So I might hit just the fifth or maybe the fifth and fourth. It's not super important exactly which ones I hit. Okay, but basically I'm treating beats one and two, the lower end of my chord. To me, those are kind of like the kick drum. The upper part of the chord kind of sounds more like the snare drum. And that truly is how I approach it. It's trying to get that sort of percussion, that rhythm, that that just kind of going along. It's keep It keeps a groove. But just playing quarter notes like that doesn't establish what I consider to be one of the three common standard basic grooves. Pretty much every song you're gonna play falls into one of three categories. It's either a straight feel, okay? And a straight feel means we're dividing each beat into two pieces. One and two and three and four. So in something like that, where I'm doing a straight feel, I'm going to keep that going. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So I'm just keeping this going on the groove, one and two and three and four. 
but on beats two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, I'm gonna hit that snare on beats two and four. Now, I don't, if you miss one, it's really no big deal. You might go one and two and three and four and one. So I'm kind of leaving some out. One, leave out the and. Two and three and four, leave out the and. Okay, I might go one and two and three and four and one and two and then leave out that and. Three and four. Okay, I can vary that basic groove a lot just by leaving some out here or there. Which means if you accidentally forget to strike a string or you accidentally miss, don't let it stop you. Keep going. Okay, you also might notice that, hey, if I always leave beat, three out, for example, that's kind of a cool sound. I like that. Great. The fundamental groove is still eighth notes, straight eighth notes. So you're just implying that groove with your guitar. Now, by the way, this is also very handy if you have something like a Digitech Trio, or I guess it's the Trio Plus now, where you sort of play into it and it makes up the band to go with you. These types of grooves are very easy for electronic devices to read. <laughs> they're very, because they establish the groove. There's no fluff. There's no frilly extra stuff. They're, they're very simple. They're very straightforward. So your, your device or your looper or whatever it is can, can pick that up and hear it easily. It, it establishes the groove very well. Okay, so again, if I'm doing it straight, one and two and three and four and one, and when it comes time to change chords, same thing. Five chord, two and three and four and one and two. Doesn't matter if I'm doing a 12 bar blues, doesn't matter if I'm doing an eight bar blues, none of it, doesn't matter at all. That groove works. Now that's the straight field groove. There's two other kinds. One of them I call the slow blues and one of them I call a shuffle of blues, shuffle blues. Both of them, subdivide each beat into three pieces. You've probably heard me talk about this before. One and duh, two and duh, three and duh. It's much easier to hear that in the slow blues. One and duh, two and duh, three and duh, four and duh. Now you could play that, but almost nobody would, myself included. Instead, we tend to leave the and out. One and duh, and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two. It's very much like if you're familiar with it. One and uh, two and uh, three. And in fact, you'll notice in that beats two and four are where we do the stretch. And I'm a little flat. <laughs> Okay, so that's one and uh, two and uh, three. Same idea. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. And you can hear at that slower tempo, it it makes a little bit more sense. Now the Shuffle blues is basically the same idea, it's just faster. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Now what can happen is that can get, if you're trying to really go fast, you'll notice that I can't down strum that anymore. <laughs> so that's when things get a little bit tricky. So again, I'm so I'm going to use the up and down strum. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three. But I'm going to pick up the pace. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two. Now what I have to be very, very careful of on that one is that right hand muting. So I've really got to be careful to keep that going because otherwise I'm going to get one. Right, and it's gonna be this big, you know, kind of globby thing. There is a secondary reason you don't want that 
just big lots of sound going everywhere, which is, let's say you're playing into a looper or let's say you're playing just you and a friend, right? Okay, this is also a great chance to use this is, you know, let's just say it's you and a buddy and you're playing rhythm and they are soloing. You don't want to play big and loud because that, that makes the other person who's soloing have to work to get over you. You want to stay kind of in the background. You want to stay a little bit more subdued. So this is a good way to do that. Similarly, if you're playing into a looper for you to solo over it, you don't want to be in your own way. So you don't want to be playing, you know, something big and loud and then you're, and you can't hear it because all you hear is what's coming back out of the looper, right? You, you got to learn to kind of stay out of your own way. So same idea here. So I'm going to just keep it nice and nice and small. works the same way. But again, the point to remember, it's the same as the slow blues. It's still one and a two and a three and a four and a, we just kind of pull that and out. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three. As it gets faster, get to a point where you got to go in both directions. It's fine. It's not fundamentally different, but it is a slightly different technique. Okay. So hopefully you get the idea. This is pretty much all I use. You can do some variations, you know, I can do some little things like that, but fundamentally, you're going to notice that anytime I play into my looper, it's basically the chord is on two and four or close by. <laughs> and you'll notice that in between those chord stabs on two and four, I'm chunking away kind of on the lower couple of strings. I would wager that if you go back and look through a bunch of my old videos, you'll see that that's more often than not how I handle it. That's pretty much just what works. There's no drums, there's no bass, I've got to do it all myself. Okay, so try it out, play with it, have some fun with it. As always, if you have some guitar playing friends that you think would get something out of this video, I hope you will share it with them. And I am Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care.